Are you a fan of Red Bull? You might know that this energy drink is famous for its wild marketing techniques that include snowboarding down an active volcano and performing 10-story motorcycle jumps. But do you know how it all started? In this video, we'll explore the crazy truth about the history of Red Bull, from its humble beginnings as a medicinal syrup in rural Thailand to becoming the king of the caffeinated throne, with a global energy drink market expected to be worth around $90 billion by the end of 2022. But that's not all. We'll reveal some of Red Bull's most unconventional marketing techniques that helped make the brand what it is today. So grab a can of Red Bull and join us on this exhilarating journey through the history of one of the most successful beverage brands ever. On October 14, 2012, skydiver Felix Baumgartner ascends to the edge of space as the bolts go back to back to back and the audience applauds. He takes a tiny step and then free falls roughly 120,000 feet to the ground as millions of viewers watch. During his descent, he not only breaks the sound barrier, but also sets a number of world records. However, as evidenced by the recognizable symbol, Red Bull, not NASA or SpaceX, was responsible for this impressive feat. Red Bull is renowned for its outlandish marketing techniques, which include snowboarding down an active volcano and performing 10-story motorcycle jumps, as well as owning numerous teams in racing, football, and esports. But how did this straightforward energy drink, which was formerly a mysterious medicinal syrup, become one of the most successful marketing goods ever and such a game-changer in the beverage industry? With the global energy drink market expected to be worth around $90 billion by the end of 2022, Red Bull is currently king of the caffeinated throne. In 2021 alone, Red Bull sold more than 9.8 billion cans across 172 countries, which is more than one can for every person on the planet. Red Bull had the most unlikely and modest beginnings, despite its success. Its founder parents were fruit vendors and duck farmers in rural Thailand, where it first appeared. Due to financial limitations, they were unable to give their kids a formal education, and the company's founder, Chalio, grew up with few opportunities to work on a farm. Chalio put a lot of effort and saved money before his parents sent him to work with his brother in Bangkok as a pharmaceutical sales representative in order to start his own little company, TC Pharmaceutical Industries, in 1956. The company's primary goal at first was to sell imported medications like antibiotics. But at this time, Japanese pharmaceutical companies started making herbal syrups, marketed as energizing tonics, and these products quickly became well-liked in Thailand. After managing TC Pharmaceutical Industries for almost 10 years, Chalio made the decision to develop his own line of energy boosters. But he noticed that the current selections were pricey and catered to wealthy customers. Being from a low-income background himself, Chalio understood the greater need for energy-boosting products among the blue-collar workers like farmers and construction workers. To serve this market, Chalio created his own tonic, which he named Crating Ding, which means red water buffalo and stands for tenacity and strength. It contains caffeine, B vitamins, taurine, and a significant amount of sugar. Although the drink did not take off right away, Chalio's plan to market it in rural and provincial areas paid off, and over time, the working class began to take an interest in it. Chalio then began sponsoring Muay Thai fights, a well-liked form of martial arts in Thailand. In an effort to promote his beverage and establish a link with vigor and strength, this branding strategy was successful, and among the working class, Crating Deng came to represent tenacity. By 1980, the drink was a huge hit in Thailand. But it wasn't until Chalio met Dietrich Mateschitz, an Austrian entrepreneur who sold toothpaste, that the drink would grow into the multi-million dollar global empire it is today. Although Chalio invented the beverage, Mateschitz's contribution was essential to expanding the company. After 10 years of partying, traveling, and pursuing women, Dietrich, a graduate of the University of Commerce in Vienna, was hired by the German company Blendax as a director of international marketing. He traveled extensively for work and frequently had jet lag. He discovered Chalio's energy drink, Kraken Dang, during a particular taxing trip to Thailand. And it not only gave him energy, but also helped him recover from jet lag. As a fan, he discovered that the drink was only offered in Thailand. Dietrich made the decision to leave his job and team up with Chalio to take the beverage globally, starting with Europe, after reading about the popularity of energy drinks in Asia. Red Bull was introduced in Austria in 1987, initially focusing on hip ski resorts. Due to a limited marketing budget, Dietrich had to rely on innovative and less expensive marketing techniques, such as giving Red Bull cases to popular college students so that they could drive Mini Coopers with huge Red Bull cans on them around campus. Additionally, they employed attractive women to serve free drinks on college campuses as Red Bull girls, 
Salespeople for Red Bull, known as Musketeers, gave out free samples to bars, encouraging mixologists to come up with new cocktail concoctions. To raise brand awareness, the company also left empty cans in bars and nightclubs. Due to giving away so many free products as part of their marketing strategies, Rebel actually suffered a financial loss, even though the strategies caused the company to sell over 1 million cans in the first year. Dietrich understood the value of making early investments in their brand, and it paid off when the sales doubled to 2 million cans in the second year, and again to 4 million cans in the third. Red Bull gained a lot of popularity very quickly, especially in Germany, where they had trouble keeping up with demand. Despite their success, running TV advertisements to counteract mainstream advertising remained an expensive option. Due to his passion for extreme sports, Dietrich discovered that very few significant corporations were endorsing these competitions. Red Bull was able to position itself as more than just an energy drink by endorsing extreme sports. The brand came to be associated with risk-takers and exhilarating pursuits. Red Bull made its American debut in 1997. But the $1.7 billion energy drink market had grown and faced more competition at that time. Contrary to competitors in the beverage industry like Coca-Cola, Red Bull's ingredients were listed on the can in full view of the consumer. Red Bull initially only had one flavor, which did poorly in taste tests. But despite this, sales kept increasing. When asked why he didn't create a product with better flavor, Dietrich responded that the goal of Red Bull was to create a brand that revolved around an experience rather than the actual product. Instead of trying to cram a product into people's lives, Red Bull set out to be a storytelling company that would draw customers into the developing myth. Red Bull made significant marketing investments, team acquisitions, in-house media company development, and world-class event hostings to achieve this. Gerhard Berger, a legend of Austrian Formula One, was Red Bull's first sponsored athlete in 1989. In today's competitive and amateur sports, including football, ice hockey, Formula One, and esports, Red Bull sponsors over 500 athletes, adventurers, and daredevils. This has allowed the business to generate new sources of income, such as from Formula One sponsorships and prize money. Red Bull is able to naturally generate conversations and brand recognition by owning teams like New York Red Bulls. Red Bull even has invented its own sporting competitions, like the Flug Tag, a flying day competition in which teams fly their own homemade aircraft. Like Lollapalooza and Austin City Limits, Red Bull also sponsors art and music events. As evidenced by their success in sending daredevils to the edge of space and setting world records, Red Bull's marketing strategy is effective. These enduring occasions and spectacles frequently pay off in the long run. It's interesting to note that Red Bull doesn't actively promote their products during these events. Instead, they strive for brand recognition. This strategy doesn't devalue the spectacle and gives the impression of watching something cool from a business that also sells energy drinks. Despite its beginnings as the most affordable option for blue-collar workers in Thailand, Red Bull is primarily a marketing company that has successfully elevated its energy drink into a premium lifestyle product, with over 100 billion cans sold globally since 1987, and Red Bull currently controlling over 80% of the energy drink market share in some nations. The brand's success can be largely attributed to strong branding and marketing. This achievement, though, has not been without controversy. Several nations have outlawed Red Bull because of worries about its caffeine content and other ingredients. But these restrictions have been lifted since more studies show that the beverage is safe. The company's slogan, Red Bull Gives You Wings, was the subject of a false advertisement lawsuit that led to a $13 million settlement for the brand. The case of the Red Bull Fortune heir, who was charged with murdering a policeman in Thailand while operating his Ferrari, is what has drawn the most attention to the company's controversy. Many have criticized the brand for its perceived impunity in the face of justice because the case has not been pursued despite a great deal of evidence. As we come to the end of this journey into the history of Red Bull, it's clear that this brand's success story is anything but ordinary. From its humble origins as a tonic marketed to rural workers in Thailand to becoming a global empire worth billions, Red Bull's journey is a testament to the power of innovative marketing and a commitment to building a brand. It's fascinating to see how the company's unique approach to marketing, such as sponsoring extreme sports events and employing attractive Red Bull girls, has helped it achieve its dominant position in the energy drink market. And with the company's continued commitment to sponsoring cutting-edge sports, music, and cultural events, it's clear that Red Bull's legacy is far from over. So whether you're a die-hard Red Bull fan or simply intrigued by the story behind this iconic brand, we hope you enjoy this deep dive into the history of Red Bull. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.